Blog Talk Radio. The Alan Alford Sports Talk Show. The Alan Alford Sports Talk Show. Your host is here for the show tonight to interview our special guest. Everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to another great episode of the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. We're gonna have a fantastic show for you. Really glad that you guys join us this evening, September 8th. The phone number to call in is 516-418-5572. 516-418-5572. We're gonna go ahead and have a fantastic show for you. We're gonna have a fantastic guest as well. But first, before we get started, I want to go ahead and thank our fantastic sponsor, that's going to be Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce. So delicious and addicting, you may need a support group. So definitely check out Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce at flbbqsauce.com. Again, that's flbbqsauce.com. You can't go wrong with that barbecue sauce. We have four different flavors. You have honey mustard, heat wave, fusion, And you also have classic. So definitely check them out. And in fact, we're going to play the Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce song. Before we do that, you can get your four-pack at flbbqsauce.com. Again, that's flbbqsauce.com. We have our Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce song now by Sam Scola. Sam Scola in Maine. Please reach out to me if you're interested in signing Sam Scola. So here's the Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce song by Sam Scola out in Maine. Thank you. Comes in for the variety, Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce, a natural flavor. Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce, Florida gold honey mustard on burgers and ribs. On pork and sausage, a classic taste for chicken steak tips, a hot heat wave on meatballs and ham. It's a cookout treat, Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce. Serve on fish and vegetables, Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce, Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce, Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce. There you go, Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce song by Sam Scola. I'm going to have the great honor of actually spending tomorrow morning and eating breakfast with Chef G's 
It's an honor to eat with Chef G's. And you guys could visit his his restaurant now right there at 301 South 22nd Street in Tampa, Florida. Again, that's 301 South 22nd Street. I went to his red carpet opening. It was a beautiful time. Great times there. Great food. If you need culinary services, Chef G's could come and deliver for you. So, yes, today we got a fantastic guest. This is awesome. Yes, we have a special guest today. His name is Matthew Tyler from the XFL Insider Podcast. He's going to be joining us. We're we'll talking about XFL. He's also a credential, not only in XFL, but also for the New Orleans Saints. We're going to learn about Matthew and a lot more. So let me go ahead and bring Matthew right on. Let me do that for you right now. How are you doing so far tonight, Matthew? Very good. How are you, Alan? Doing fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Alan Alfred Sports Talk Show. Really, really excited to have you as our special guest honored in fact and i guess i'll start right there what drew you into the xfl well first up just want to say thanks for having me on greatly appreciate it love talking xfl and as well as just kind of getting some some word out to other individuals and, and you know just talking about the pros of the sport uh but yeah man what got me started actually in the xfl i would say i've always been athletically minded i, I was a coach player uh, i was in education i did a lot of different things but a uh, big fan of new orleans new orleans saints uh I- any kind of football really is what drove me in but originally um a league came along called the aaf i'm not sure if you're too familiar uh but if so that's kind of what drew me in back in 2019 um 2018, I think. I can't remember the the years, really. They kind of blend together since the COVID times. But I will say it was in Memphis, the Memphis Express. uh, It was an alternative sports spring league. And uh, I went to four or five games for that league and fell in love with the alternative sports world. Uh, This really got me going and and kind of drove drove my own – sense of uh of wanting to belong and come become part of a community so when the xfl popped off in 2020 really hit hard on just being a super fan i mean any way i can engage and find out information anything i could do to really get you know in in in-depth views of what was going on with that xfl 2020 i tried and uh as the season approached for this this last iteration of the xfl i really wanted to just uh try to bring uh, the community informed information almost from a fan standpoint. I don't ever claim to be an expert. I don't ever claim to be anybody famous. You know, I, I'm just a guy that I, I'm pursuing this sport and, and trying to connect as many collaborators, personalities, news media analysts, and fans together to have a, a unique experience amongst everyone. So really, I'd say that was what got me involved. I just wanted to really give an informed experience and, and provide a good form of fan engagement for the, the fans of the XFL. Wow, that's great that you got that experience and that insight and had to bring it to light to others to, so they can go ahead and find information about the XFL. How how has the experience been for you being with this X, the XFL and covering the XFL? Oh, man, it's been fantastic. I've done things that I never thought I'd do. I've spoke with individuals that I never thought, you know, I would have conversations with. And I went from being a nobody in this in this realm of, of XFL to being someone that people can count on and trust for information and just to, to have an in-depth conversation, you know, without any kind of judgmental opinions or arguments. You know, I, I really want to know what makes people tick, and I really want to know how, how people think and feel. And I, I think that's kind of what sets me apart here. Uh, but I will say that it, it's been fantastic, man. There's been some great experiences, such as the XFL championship that you were involved with also. I know that's where I met you. Uh, just great, great experiences all the way around. Yeah, it really has been a wonderful, wonderful experience. I Like, you know, I said to Mitt, a lot of what you said that I can't believe, you know, it's been a year, a season, and how much was experienced in, in one season. It was just magnificent. And to meet so many people like yourself and players and coaches, it really, really is something special. And some of the people I got a chance to meet were the owners. That was Danny Garcia, as well as, you know, Dwayne Johnson. So talk about their roles and their leadership of the XFL so far. And I think they've done a fantastic job in terms of taking something that was nothing 
and making it relevant. Um, they, they've they've took something that had its own name and turned it into their own brand. Um, that's that's extremely hard to do when people are mistrusting you for that brand shutting down previous. So I feel like they've done a lot of good just in that sense there. At the same time, they actually listen to the fans. They engage the fans. Uh, now, not to say this league is perfect. There are things that we could work on. But in terms of their ownership, you know, I believe they are the face of this brand. And, and you can tell and you can speak just like I do. You know, when Dwayne Johnson walks into a room regarding XFL, you can tell a difference. You know, when he walked into that stadium and into the main area, you know, you could tell a difference. They are the fame of, of the league, and they really – are the people that are promoting it. And I will say, too, I'm also loving the fact that they promote it as a second opportunity. They're giving people chances. They're giving people uh, time. They're giving people the ability to showcase their skills. And that doesn't mean just players. That means coaches, staff, administrators, uh, people like me in the media. I mean, everybody has an opportunity and the experience from these individuals. So I'm very thankful in what they're doing, and I look forward to to what they instill into this league to, to improve it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, the amount of opportunities that they have given to other people is just phenomenal. That is players, coaches, people like yourself and me working in the media. It's been fantastic. And, in fact, being it, you are like myself working in the media, how does that compare the XFL versus the NFL you know, you have better insight on that. How does that compare to yourself, Matthew? Oh, man. I, I will say now, I don't I, I don't like to compare too much because I feel like they're two different worlds. And when you go into these NFL games and as a media person, you can see that. And that doesn't that doesn't necessarily mean that's a bad thing. But, uh, man, you can you can definitely tell a huge difference in, in the seriousness of the matters at hand. Um my time spent with the Saints so far, I think I've been to four practices, which were training camp, and then I went to one preseason game. I mean, it is all business in there, and it's 100% professional. There, I mean, everything is legitimate as it comes. I will say with the XFL, I got the same feeling, but I, personally I feel like the media doesn't really give the league the respect it deserves. And that doesn't—that I don't mean the NFL by that. I mean the media within the NFL. Um, so I feel like that's a big, big thing that I notice differently. But otherwise, uh, it, very, very professional, very, very serious, business oriented. You could tell last year coming into it as media. You know, I went to most of the Houston Roughnecks games. I, I believe I went to all the home games, um, as well as a playoff game and the championship game, and. Honestly, Alan, I can't compare the two because they're just two different worlds. I mean, it's it's fantastic. And if you love it, you'll love it. <laughs> yeah, you're right about that. It is something special. And, you know, being a part of the XFL is, is wonderful. And you get a chance to go ahead and, and hang out with the Houston Roughnecks. Talk about the stadium and actually covering the Roughnecks. Now that that's probably my most favorite time spent doing this. So, you know, there's a lot of hours and things going, but when you actually get to go to those stadiums and talk to other individuals, whether it be players, people covering the league, coaches, fans, people working there, I mean, it, it it's it's a fantastic experience. And when you get on the ground there and it, like I said previously in your last question, I mean, it's all business when you get to the NFL game, but it's the same kind of concept, the XFL game. I mean, everyone there is, is taking it serious, and, and they're there to better themselves and to better those around them. Uh, I will say that, you know, getting there, you get there about three to four hours early being media. I really got the, the opportunity to, to check out that stadium, um, to look at every single thing I feel like. I walked around, whether it be – the concessions or the upward boxes, I mean, we I got a good view of what was going on. Uh, the people there, fantastic, great people there in Houston. I can't speak on too many of the other places besides San Antonio because, you know, I didn't go. But I'll say the people there in Houston, fantastic. Fans loved it there. Uh, man, to be honest with you, what, what clicked for me and made me fall in love more was attending those games as media. Personally, I'd never experienced that until I went to an XFL game. 
and, as media, and uh, it was the first game of the season, and it was it was unreal. You know, you meet these people like like me and you now that are talking, and you'll never think you'd get to have a conversation with these individuals, and you get to meet them and talk and and network and, and be a person. Um, at the same time, you're there for business, and everyone there's for business, but you can fear that you can feel the shared goal. You can feel the excitement. You can feel it all. Um, it, it it's just a it's a completely different experience than being a fan, but at the same time, it, it's no better or worse. It, it's just as enjoyable. And if you're there for that experience, then that's where where you need to be, hands down, 100. percent Yeah, you're right. I mean, it's it's just a lot of fun, and it's a different feeling going to an an XFL game that is just so much fun. I'm excited for year two. In fact, what yep. would you like to see happen in year two of the XFL? Now in year two, I mean, I want consistency. So, I mean, I personally, if we can get some more fans out, that would be my biggest thing. Uh, you know, more people in the stadiums during games, that, that's going to be huge for the XFL. And as well as just, just getting their investment back and making some money next year, they need that. So, I would say I would like to see the XFL do some more fan engagement. You know, really, really get in tune with your fan groups in each city, whether that be events, holding practices, uh, fundraising, whatever, whatever that includes in that wing. You really need to pursue the the communities and the places your teams are in. Uh, doing this is going to really provide a, a sense of being with these individual fans. And I know, as well as you may know. I mean, XFL fans are among no other, and we come and we we show out and support. And you can look at communities like in St. Louis or San Antonio. Those those places are doing some really good fan engagement, and that's going to be crucial for the improvement of this league. No, you're right. The second right. thing I'd say. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go 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 right ahead, Matthew. I was just going to say the second thing I'd like to really see is us get these relocation matters finished before the season starts quicker that these two teams, you know, the Houston Roughnecks, they're relocating in Houston somewhere. No one knows where yet. It's still up in the air as well as the Vipers in Vegas. They're relocating. Now the Vipers, there's a lot of different rumors going about where they will be relocating. No one really knows truly where. So we really have to get those locations picked and rolling so that we can pursue this fan engagement. Like I talked about. Yeah, that's right. I mean, definitely it is something that you kind of want to solidify with the community so that they know what to expect. There'll be fans and yep. and there'll be the team moving there. You know, what are your thoughts on them actually both the Vegas Vipers and the Houston Roughnecks actually moving locations? What are your thoughts on that? As, as, as for the Roughnecks, that was the team I covered, so it does make me a little upset that they are moving. I appreciated the league coming out and saying, hey, they are relocating. We There for a while it was a, hey, we may be re- relocating. So we actually got an official press release stating that they were relocating, so that was good. Um, and the Roughnecks themselves, they're going to stay in Houston, and us as fans and, and XFL media, you know that. They're looking at Rice Stadium, most likely, which is literally right down the road. It's not far, probably five minutes uh, down, down from where they're, they currently are. So very similar in terms of location. Stadium is bigger, older, but, I mean, it's football. So I think, personally, it's not the best ideal place, but it, it works. And so as a fan and media, I'm happy with that. Now, on a different note, with the Vegas Vipers relocation, if you were an XFL fan, or even if not, you probably heard about the field conditions in Vegas, uh, that Cashman Field Stadium. Um, It it wasn't the best, and it it made their professional experience for football look bad, whether it be from fans or players. You heard complaints all the way around. Now now we hear now that the Vipers are relocating, but we don't know where. Uh, Could be Nevada. Could be Las Vegas. Could be Arizona. Could be places like Portland, people have even been saying. Um, I've heard a lot of different locations, so I can't really say anything factual. And and I don't like to speak on speculation much. But I will say that we've got to get something nailed down. Uh, I don't know what market. I don't know where they're going to be. But the longer they wait, 
the more it's going to take to battle this negative media. The longer they wait, the more it's going to take to get a, a, a standing ground to actually, you know, build that fan base back up. As a Vipers fan, personally, I don't know if I could go to a different city and support my team or even state if they moved. You know, so that's a tough spot. And I've heard a lot of people say rebrand the team. Don't use Vipers. Don't use that anymore. It's already been moved. Why are you going to do it again? I mean, I'm here for the league to improve, and I try to be as positive as I can. But we really, really, they've got to get something locked down for that Vipers team soon. And and soon meaning ideally by November, Thanksgiving at the latest. Uh, Nobody wants to go to buy tickets a month before these games start and still not know where we are. So that that's that's my biggest thing with it. I understand the league has to move the Vipers just because of the negativity as well as the plain the plain surfaces that they were in just their cells. But I feel like it, you're going to rub some fans wrong and you're giving people a talking point of negativity. And and that's going to be things that have to be battled with certain things that that, that must be prepared correctly. So that, that's my thoughts on it. I try not to dwell too much in it because I got a lot to say. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, I mean, yeah, just observing the field, it did look pretty rough. You know, I know it's football, but you definitely don't want somebody injured on the field because of the conditions. Yeah. So I understand the move. But, yeah, it would be – that would make a lot of sense to nail down a location sooner than later for sure. Yep, yep, agreed. Yep. Yeah, and, you know, on a positive note, I was able to go ahead and interview Kennedy Smith, the game host of the Roughnecks. How do you feel as if the job that she's doing? Oh, fantastic. I thought that whole group was great. They provided a lot of different experiences and and super positive and fun, too. I mean, if you went to those games and saw the work they were doing, um, I can't remember the guy she was with. Do you know what his name was? I cannot remember. There was another guy that worked with her. Both of them did a great job. And, and yeah, I look forward to that next year. Them bringing in the, the Texas talent, the Texas big names in there, are really what I mean by that fan engagement experience. You know, giving local local celebrities, you know, the platform to talk about their product or or bringing in people that people know from that state to, to represent that team, stuff like that is what really gives people a buy-in. So I think that whole experience is fantastic, whether it's the actual hiring of her and having her do that job or her actual position and what she does. I think she, she does a fantastic job in, in engaging those fans positively. Yeah, that's that's the high praise there. You definitely keep up the great work there, Kenny Smith. And I know a lot of that fans are – Taken. I've watched her a lot now, so so I will definitely give her high praise. <laughs> that's awesome. Yes, yeah, I mean definitely, and you know that's the feeling I get. She enjoys, she loves her job. You know that's that's the opportunities that XFL provides that people don't, you don't really think about it. An opportunity like that could come about, and she was even there doing a championship game. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I remember when she uh, she would race the people on the sidelines. Uh, they would have you know forty yard dashes, or there <laughs> there was one where they were hurtling over individuals that were on their hands and knees, and she actually kicked a guy in their ribs. <laughs> it was it was it was a good time though. It wasn't bad. It was fun. <laughs> wow. See, I didn't know that. See, that's, that's yeah, awesome. Dude. Yeah, you, <laughs> watch it on YouTube. You get a chance. There, they should be on YouTube. Wow, so I missed that. Yeah, I'm going to check that out for sure. That's fantastic. <laughs> but, yeah, that's the great thing about the XFL. It's just opportunity, and you just don't know what to expect. It's so fun. People really need to get engaged in it. I know people were talking about the league was kind of thinking about it expanding. What are your thoughts about the league expanding at this point? At this point, I think we should wait uh you know, really get your feet under you before you try to move. Uh, if the opportunity arose where they could expand adequately and they had the budget, then sure. But I think next year we're going to really look at a time when the XFL has to make some money. 
And, and they might not have to make money, but they can't lose too much money. Uh, the last year, we knew that they were going to not not come out in the clear just because it's a it's a starting business. You're going to acquire debt. Things are going to happen. You're even dealing with the old debt of the old league, of, of the old ownership. So there's a lot going on there. But, yeah, I, I don't think expansion is a good idea yet. I think 2025, 2026, we'll look at more expansion possibilities. But right now, I mean, just just for example, if, if we, they were talking about expanding to – San Diego, but we're still up in the air on the Roughnecks or the Vipers. I mean, how would that make their their brand look? Not very good in my mind. So definitely just got to give some more time for for the expansion to be adequate and to find, you know, the brand and the cash to make it what it should be on the field. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. When I heard that, I was thinking the same exact same thing. It's no secret that the league has been operating as, as a loss. You know, like you said, get your feet settled, you know, deal with the eight teams you have now. Really, really go ahead and just blow it out, you know, with the eight teams. Continue to do great things like you're doing, and the time will come for expansion. I, I, you know, I agree with you. You know, you don't want to be a business and just be bleeding money, money, and money, and then – you run into issue. And of course, when you expand, there's more expenses. So I agree with you. Just stick with the eight teams, do it hard and bring it to the next level when the time is right. Yes, sir. You know, I I think, I don't know how much has been talked about, but actually having ownerships for these teams would help them a lot financially. And I'm sure that's a plan they have down the road. I know it's been talked about, but you know, having having an owner for a team would provide a a huge relief for them to be able to do this and expand more. So, if we ever look at the team ownership for individuals or different companies, I think we'll definitely see some expansion happen soon after. It won't be long, but but that that's going to be huge just for the overall success and long term. Uh, I know that's kind of just talking, but. But really, if you want to succeed and have someone take pride in that team, whether it be a city or a business, that's going to be the way to do it. Yes, and, and definitely I wanted to get your thoughts on players who have made it to the XFL and went on to the NFL. What are your thoughts about that opportunity that it provides for somebody who's really hungry and wants to get to the NFL? That's what I'm all about. That's that's become my my biggest love and the actual podcast I do. Uh, I'm all about giving people a voice, the opportunity to showcase themselves or, or just get some more eyes on them. So personally, I think it's fantastic. I'm all about the development of, of better betterment, whether it be on the field or you as an individual. Uh, I feel like the guys that right now there's only one guy that actually made it from our past from the 2023 year and that was Dan Whalen. I mean he's actually the punter for the Green Bay Packers now. Now there were seventeen men that made it uh, as practice squad members and they're on different teams throughout the NFL. Uh my my three that I'm covering uh closely right now are John Trey, John Trey Kirkland, Jack Henflin, and then Kiko Lelos. Um all three are on the Saints practice squad so I'm I'm covering them pretty closely in terms of, as close as I can at least. Um uh, but yeah I think it's great, man, and and that's what I'm here for, and that's what I'm about. If if we were getting people that were just stuck, being stagnant, I don't think we'd see the level of play that we should. The fact that these guys have the opportunity and chance to take their skills to the next level, or stay in the NFL or stay in the XFL, excuse me, and show off those skills. Either way, I think it's fantastic, and I hope we see more of this next year, and, and I know we will. There's another thing, too, is we don't know how many guys from the NFL may wind up in the XFL next year. So you may be looking at some big names next year from the NFL that just didn't make it, that need another chance. So that that's another thing that, you know, to keep in the back of your mind. I know they had a rights draft recently, uh, about a month ago, July maybe. <clears throat> I saw Daryl Henderson Jr. Jr.'s name on there. That's huge for me. So I, I was a Memphis guy. I know a lot about the Memphis team. Um, he, he's a huge athlete. So imagine his co- quality, caliber, player level in the XFL. I feel like a guy like that will kill it. But either way, I think it's a fantastic thing, man. The opportunities there, the experiences are there. 
these guys get to practice being professionals before they are professionals, or they get to learn, oh, man, this is how you become a professional. I've talked to many different players. Some made it, some didn't now. And I can say that's one thing that people, the players learn how to be players. And that doesn't doesn't necessarily mean just on the field. That means how to handle yourself in the locker room, how to handle your business, how to how to be a good professional football player. And I I think all of this kind of sums that up, and and just giving these guys the opportunity to succeed. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And opportunity is the key to XFL. It is there for you. You just got to take it. And I wanted to get your thoughts on the showcases. Somebody who's thinking about going to a showcase or wants to make it to the league, you being in, in the media and being so connected with the XFL like myself, what are your thoughts about a prospective player coming to the XFL showcase and, and doing his thing? Yeah, if you have no other, you know, if this is you trying to pursue other options, you definitely need. Not only, I mean, are you going to get the opportunity to to practice your skills and show off, but you're going to be able to network with other players as well as coaches and staff from these opportunities. And this is going to be really big in in your career and future as a player. So, yeah, definitely it's worth the money. It's worth the time to to pursue that and do it. The evaluation processes that the XFL is using now is pretty innovative. I'm sorry. And they they have a lot of different uh, things that are made to increase the time for evaluation. So I don't know if you were familiar with the showcases, but as well as the combine, they streamed the combine uh, live on YouTube, so that was pretty cool. But they did a lot of different technology-driven evaluations, um, such as like grip strength and velocity on bench press. Uh, they, they did a 40 that was timed using a vest. You didn't, you didn't have the standard clock time. So I think all those things are things that you're going to see as a player in your future. So it's crucial to get there and practice that, just like you're practicing with anything else. Uh, I will say also, I was loved that they did that live stream. I thought that was great. The, the live stream was a really great way to get your fans engaged. They were answering questions, doing giveaways during. They would ask the fans, hey, what do you want to see next? And they would approach players and coaches and talk to them. So all those things summed up, they were, they were really great. And that's what I want to see from the XFL. They're not doing things that other leagues are doing, and that's fine because they're better for that. And so, you know, if we can get that in that for the players as well as the fans, it's fantastic. Absolutely. I'm I'm excited. I, I did see the documentary. I did see the grip and the live stream. It was definitely something that was unique. Next month, I know that I'm going to be at the Orlando Showcase, so I'm going to show up for that one there. I know they have one in San Diego, too, but I, I will be at the one in Orlando. And I'm excited about it because I get a chance to be there on the field at the combine where they're doing their thing i've actually been to the games and covered that but i haven't been to a combine as of yet the other ones they had i kind of had a schedule conflict but i'm excited about it yeah i bet you that's going to be a great time man and i'm I'm a little jealous i sent out emails and i haven't heard anything back yet um i hope i do because i was attempting to go as well um but, yeah, that should be a good time, and, and you should see some of these testings in person that I'm talking about and see the difference in terms of how many players they can evaluate at once or, or how you can get an emphasis on, on one guy and not the others. I mean, I don't feel like players are really going to, like, slip through the cracks when they do these evaluations like this. That That's just my opinion, though. No, you're absolutely right. They're not going to slip through the cracks, and – For somebody who's a prospective player who wants more insight on that, not only check out those videos that you mentioned, but watch the video that I did with Coach Buckley, and we talked about players not being overlooked. So even if you don't run the fastest 40-yard dash, per se, you still will not get overlooked, which is outstanding because they're going to look at other metrics, and that gives you more of an opportunity because, hey, nobody's perfect, but you might not have the best 40. You still can contribute and do a lot of great things on the, on the field. Yes, sir. Exactly. But yeah. And, and also Matthew, I wanted to get, you know, how could fans 
follow you and keep up with you with all things XFL? You can find me on Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook. Those are my three ways of engagement. Um, the XFL Insider Podcast, uh, and then I believe YouTube and Twitter are just XFL Insider Pod. Uh, but if you search it, you'll find it. It's I'm, I'm pretty unique in terms of names on there with XFL. Uh, also, the show's available on any kind of streaming platform, so Spotify, Apple, in any of that good stuff, Google, it's available, and that's just the audio version now. I'll say all of the, the live versions are on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Awesome. Yep, definitely make sure you guys follow the XFL Insider Podcast with Matthew Tyler, and he's going to make sure he give you that great insight. And is there any other things you wanted to let our great fans know about the XFL to for those who missed out or some information they didn't know? Uh, supplemental draft will be in January 2024. The, the exact date hasn't been announced yet. Now, that draft's going to include the guys that will be um, in these showcases on the 7th and 21st, as well as NFL players that are dropped from rosters, I believe. Um, so, so definitely pay attention to that. I would say that's really going to be the finalization of rosters when we get to that point in the XFL. Um, there should be another draft, like I said, on October 4th. It's in the IXFL date. Uh, it, it, nobody truly knows if that's truth yet just because it's in the documentary, but we don't have official documents you know, saying that. So we'll see what happens. But, yeah, just keep your eyes on the draft. Keep your eyes on players that may be coming. And, and if you want to be involved and really get into this stuff, I mean, there's plenty of personalities and media to follow. You don't have to follow me. You, but there's plenty to do and keep up with. So, yeah, definitely pay attention to it, guys at home. Um, it is what I consider a developmental league, but it's professional, and, and that's the difference. And that's that's really what I like to say is this opportunity that they're giving individuals is amongst no other. And whether it be me, you, or the guys on the field, we all see what the value of the league has and what it's offering. And so I, I definitely respect and appreciate them and – so far, it's been a great ride. So I just want to say officially, thank you, XFL. Appreciate you. Yeah, thank you, XFL. I definitely sentiment that it's been a definitely a whirlwind, fantastic experience. I was honored and blessed to go to the championship game, the first one of this new ownership. I'm looking forward to seeing you year two at the championship game, wherever it ends yes, up being. Sir. Sounds That's good, right. man. If you ever come this way to Houston, let me know. We'll meet up, grab some dinner or something. Um, I would love to, you know, you know, it, it's always a good time networking and having some, some keen communication with individuals. Definitely. I, I'm going to hold you to that, Matthew. Definitely. I, I'm coming out to Houston from time to time, so I will hold you to that. I'm looking forward to it. Sounds that. good, Alan. Yes, sir. I appreciate, I appreciate you joining us on the Alan Alfred Sports Talk Show. Have a blessed weekend, and I look forward to talking to you and seeing you real soon, Matthew. Yes, sir. We'll see you on your appearance on my show very soon. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, appreciate you, you Alan. Oh, I appreciate you too. If you ever you need too. anything from me, give me a shout. I'm not shy. <laughs> <laughs> I will do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. So Have a good night. Me. You do say likewise. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. Peace. Yes, sir. Bye-bye. I'll take care. Yes, yeah, so that was fantastic guest, Matthew Tyler from the XFL Insider Podcast. Make sure you guys follow and link up with Matthew. He has great insight. This, this is the great things that we do here at the Allen Alfred Sports Hook Show is we give you guys great opportunities to get some insight. And I definitely sentiment thank you, Danny Garcia. Thank you, Dwayne Johnson. Thank you, all of the XFL coaches, players, Anybody administration, you guys are wonderful. Keep doing fantastic work. Social media team as well. You guys are fantastic. Kennedy Smith, we talked about earlier. Keep doing your thing. Other people will find out eventually how great this is. It might take a day. It might take a month, but they will find out. Keep doing your great job. And speaking of fantastic job, we have another fantastic caller. We'll bring him on right now. How you doing so far tonight, Lou? You called? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Well, better than the better than the U.S. basketball team, that's for sure. 
<laughs> well, then again, no, I'm not. I mean, going into the match, there was a lot of reports saying that you know that Germany was just too um, too big in size for the U.S. to to contend with. Uh, it looked like the Germans going to blow them out at the beginning of the fourth quarter. They were up by 12, but we made trying to make a comeback in the fourth, but we just fell a little bit short. So, you know, now we got denied a second another chance at a gold medal. We uh, we came close, but we came up just short. Yeah, it seemed like that's been the theme recently with us coming up short. But hey, yeah, we're at least we're at least in the hunt. So at least that's good. Yeah, doesn't this doesn't exclude us from next year's Olympics? You know, not at all. But it would be nice to see when you get a World Cup. Well, at least Spain lost, so they don't get to spend either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Good. so definitely, that's, that's yeah, definitely. I was able to watch this morning, so because um, I haven't been able to watch too much because I've been um, doing other stuff. But this was uh, one match I was able to get a chance to see. Yeah, that's that's good that you did get a chance to oh, check that out. It's, and, a, it's a ridiculous times we've been doing that. Yeah, that's what makes it tough sometimes. The time zone difference. You yeah. really got to stay on top of it. You really got to be in tune of what's going on because it could be real early or real late. And well, you yeah. wonder why nobody watches. Think about it, <laughs> Bozo. I think a genius to figure that out. So the U.S. So the U.S. Uh, the XFL is going to live for another year at least. How about that? I'm shocked. It is. It is. You know, definitely it is. I'm really, really excited about year two. I'm hoping and praying that it continues to grow and grow and grow and make it for many, many, many infinite years. I mean, that's what I'm really hoping for. I know you I know. were a bit skeptical, but I'm glad that it is making the year two. I do agree with this, though. I They were talking about expanding. I do agree that they should not expand just yet and just kind of stick with the eight teams you have. Really. Yeah, and just build up from there because you don't need to be increasing debt. Try to get that, that profit margin going on the right side, the positive side. But, yeah, I love the XFL. I really do. And I'm, I'm really excited it'll be year two and hopefully many, many years infinite years afterwards. <laughs> but yeah, I know you watched the first game. What do you thought of the first NFL game of the season? You know, I was a little surprised at first, but then I think after when Kelsey got hurt, I think a lot of people were changing their minds about who was going to win. I mean, if Kelsey would have been in there, I think maybe Kansas City would have, you know, just blown him out. But with that injury, which I think would be key, and Detroit was able to take advantage of it. They but did. The coach, I, but the coach of Lions was not shocked at all. You know, I, I wasn't shocked either. When when it came to light that oh. Travis Kelsey was not going to play, I felt as if it was going to be a tough night for yeah. Patrick Mahomes. I still felt as if he could have won the game, but he was going to have to do a heroic type act at the, at the very end to pull the game out. I felt like... He was gonna have it was gonna be tough yeah. because that's that's your go to guy, you know, regardless of what. Right. That's Mr. Reliable. I mean, you throw it to him, he's gonna catch the ball nine out of ten times if and and you know, he's gonna catch it, if not ten out of ten. You know, every once in a blue moon, yeah. anything can happen. But he's he's Mr. Reliable and every quarterback loves somebody they can depend on. Yeah. But it also proves that that Mahomes can't do it all by himself either. Yeah, I mean, football is a team sport. It is the ultimate team sport. And Mahomes yes. is the number one quarterback in the league. I think Joe Burrow is number yes. two. But Patrick Mahomes is still number one in the league. But he needs he needs help. And unfortunately, yes. they needed – you know what? The Kansas City would have won if they would have recruited some of the XFL players to catch the ball. The drops yeah. really hurt. Those drops, to me – I still think Kansas City squeaks out with the win if they didn't make that many drops. Even if even the one drop that led to an interception, that was bad. But if you at least turn the game around and you made some catches, Patrick Mahomes pulls yeah. out that game. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, they still yeah. had a chance to win the game. 
As as great as the Detroit played, I still felt as if the Kansas City had a chance to pull out that game had those drops not occur. That's why the XFL is needed. Them boys would have caught them balls. Yeah, I suppose so. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it, it, I don't want to ride someone so bad. I know it's game one, but no, of course not. But it, it's is it, you know, it it did put the, it does put the Chiefs a little bit in a bind. I mean, you're o one, you lost to. Yeah, but they'll be fine. They'll be fine. Travis Kelsey would come back game two, and Patrick yeah. Mahomes is going to do his thing, and and they'll be fine. I mean, how much stock do you put into them losing this first game? Um, well, anything I said happened before the injury, but now that it happened, I guess I know why. So I didn't put a lot of much stock into it. I mean, I made a prediction before the injury happened, so you know. And after that, like, no, mm, well, maybe it's uh, that could be a factor. So I was right about yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Travis Kelsey not playing yeah. was going to be. Yeah. You see this type of thing with Tom Brady and Gronk. When when you yeah. don't have that one guy that that tight end that you know you can rely on, and you got to look for other targets, it makes a difference. I don't care who you are, it makes a difference. You know, when Tom Brady got down yeah. in that red zone, there was one guy that he knew was going to get open and he could throw the ball to and he was going to catch it. And that was Gronk. And same yeah. thing with Travis Kelsey. So I knew it was going to make a difference. I felt as if it was going to be a heroic act. And truth be told, Patrick Mahomes could have won that game <laughs> if they would have held on to the ball, at least towards the end of the game, you know, but nothing taking nothing away from Detroit. They played a great game and that was gutsy to do that fourth down conversion on the 20 yard line, that fake, fake punt. You got to give them credit for that. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's going to be exciting NFL year. I'm excited to see what's going to happen this weekend. For those who don't know, starts off. Well, the first game was on Thursday, but the full, It, yeah, first game was Thursday, for those who didn't know, but the full lineup is playing this weekend and Monday, so it's going to be an interesting season, but it's going to be great this weekend because I know you have something cooking for this weekend. What is going on with the Enhanced Sports Show for this weekend for you? Because, okay, it's uh, Saturday, 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Of course, we've got the college and pro football picks starting then. Uh, we'll take a look at the uh, FIBA championships as we head into the final now for Sunday. Uh, we'll also have a look at the last of the uh, WNBA season, which is this week, the regular season, that is. Uh, oh, yeah, the finals of the U.S. Open. Now, that's tennis, not golf now. Keep in mind that, people. If somebody asks me, wait, U.S. Open, that's over. No, that was the golf open in June. This is different. So let's get that clear right away. And, of course, uh, tying down to the last month of the regular season in MLB baseball, will the Yankees make a wild card? I don't know. Maybe. Mets, I think so. And uh, any uh, MLS, uh, WNBA, and any of us, uh, UFC and WWE stuff, so, uh, it becomes available. Uh, don't forget, we're also on YouTube. Type in the Enhanced Sports Show. First, go YouTube, then dial the Enhanced Sports Show. And you'll see the show in its entirety, as well as other shows um, for the past couple of weeks. And uh, once again, the number is 512-543-4662. So uh, if you and if you comment for the uh, football picks, try to make it no later than uh, 10 to 5. Yeah, so definitely, that's going to be a great yeah, show. And you want to get it wrong because, you know, some come in and be like, no, I can't go back too much. But all the way back, like, like page one, I'm already on the uh, middle of page two. So, uh, you know, just if you're coming for football, try and make it on time, please. Because <laughs> we've got, we got a lot to cover. That's right. you got a lot to cover. That's, again, Saturday between 4 and 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time Zone. Tomorrow, Lou from the Enhanced Sports Show. And, again, the phone number is 512. <laughs> 
512-543-4662. Again, that's 512-543-4662, the Enhanced Sports Show. You can also see him on YouTube. Just type in the Enhanced Sports Show. So make sure you guys support Lou. He's going to have a fantastic jam-packed show for you tomorrow, that's for sure. I just probably ain't got time to do the show tomorrow. <laughs> yes, it's uh, week one well, officially. Um, I mean, I I think you heard about uh, what happened uh, just prior when I went to last week's show. Uh, my aunt passed away um, a week ago, and uh, tomorrow is the repast. So I just hope I make it back in time to start the show. Otherwise, mm. I'm in trouble. Yeah, I'm so sorry to hear so, about the past of your aunt. Yeah. My condolences go out to you, Lou. I'm sorry to hear that. Thank you. Yeah, we had we had the uh we had services today and the and the um church services tomorrow. Yeah, definitely I'm sorry to hear that. But uh yeah. I pray for you and your family. Uh, I hope that you know, this weekend brings some yeah. comfort to you and you make the show on time or if you. not. And if not, guys, make sure you Call back later to the Enhanced Sports Show. Lou is, he's definitely dependable. If he's late, he's going to make it there. I'll make it. The show will go on regardless. Yeah, the show must go on. I've I've said that to uh, my listeners, fans, that, hey, I, you know, the show must go on. That's just, um, yeah. that's just how it goes. The show must go on. And that's There's the no way I ever want it. So yeah, if you if you ever want to do something special in life, folks, you always have to remember, you might not like what's going on, you, things might set you back. The show must go on. You got to keep out there and keep grinding, keep moving forward. Because I think all that's what my aunt would want for me to continue on. Yes, you definitely would, and I do yeah. too, and the fans do, and the show must go on. And you may not be feeling great that day, but you got to keep plowing away and. Yeah, My condolences go out to you, and I, I know that you're going to make it, Lou. Yeah, I'll make it. Well, many prayers go out to you and your family. Thank you, Ron. You're welcome, Lou. Thank you. I appreciate you. And <laughs> Thank you. Take care. Oh, by the way, if, you a young lady, if a young lady calls within the next few minutes, uh, you might be hearing a familiar voice. Okay. <laughs> All right. We, that would be fantastic. Hands, hands. Five one six four one eight five five seven two, folks. Five one six four one eight five five seven two. We love surprises here at the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. I appreciate the heads up. Thanks. But many blessings to you, Lou. Thank you so much, my friend. Appreciate you. Definitely, prayers and condolences go out to Lou. Sorry to hear about those news and. Unfortunately, I want to go ahead and update you guys, too, on some, since we're on that that note there. Unfortunately, Bucks former wide receiver Mike Williams, it, this was been a, has been a, a tough, tough week. But he, you know, for those who don't know, unfortunately, he was working construction work, and they had an accident where a beam fell on unfortunately Mike Williams he's had some he's in now on life support it was reported by several notated news sites that he had passed this was early in the week and by several reliable news sources too I might add and that was Tuesday I didn't find out about it till Wednesday and I checked several sources and they all said the same thing that he unfortunately passed. I had posted up a picture I took with Mike Williams stating that, you know, I'm giving my condolence that he has passed. Again, I did update that post. I did want to let you guys know, you know, I apologize. As a member of the media, I was misinformed, but Mike Williams is still alive he's on life support the family is determining what they're going to do and i'm praying for mike williams and for those who don't know mike williams does amazing amazing work for united way he used to come by 
my former employer and help with charitable donations for United Way. And he used to come there so often to help increase charitable donations for everyone in the office because, you know, you have a buck player coming out, the wide receiver to the office. That doesn't happen too often, but he was the first and person that came back multiple times. Usually it would be a special guest we would get once a year. If you missed that date, you missed out. And he was the first guest that actually came back multiple times in the office, so much so that I would and this was to increase charitable donations for United Way. He came there so many times that I even said to the people there in the office, even management, hey, you guys need to put Mike Williams on a payroll. You guys need to put a, cut, cut him a slice and give him a piece of the pie, you know, because of Mike Williams, he's come by here a lot. And But that was to increase charitable donations. He is an outstanding man and I pray for the family. I pray for Mike Williams. It, this I, I haven't you know, got all the details of the, as far as the medical details, deep details like that. It was just a lot to bear and hear that a beam fall on Mike and put him in this situation. That was enough for me to kind of handle. And I pray, I pray for Mike Williams and his family. And he, you know, for those, he's at St. Joseph's Hospital, which is of hospital I'm very familiar with. I'm not too far from that hospital. I was even telling my wife, hey, should I go down there and visit? And I was instructed to not come by by my better half, but I was definitely talking about and thinking about going down there. That uh, St. Joseph Hospital is actually the same hospital that my son was born at. So it's right next to One Buck Place. And I pray, I pray for Mike Williams and his family, the entire Buck family, Buck Nation is just, ugh. so I left the post up there and I put the edited part on the bottom about the update. Again, I apologize that, you know, I even was posting up thinking I was a day late and then the later that night or early the next day, that's when the story changed. So I apologize, but definitely I, I'm glad that he's still alive and I pray that I pray that everything works out for Mike Williams. And I wanted to also talk about before I get into my predictions on week one, there was something that came up during the week <laughs> and that was wide receiver for that, you know, what ended up happening was for the Packers, wide receiver Jaden Reed basically went out as a rookie and went to the Republic <laughs> Steakhouse in Wisconsin. And he showed a, a bill there of 15000 to take out the whole team and he had to pay for it. I will just say, I think that that was just a joke. I don't really believe the bill was 15000 just so that people who got really upset about it. I don't believe the bill was truly 15000 The reason why I say this is because I checked into the menu, the most expensive item on the menu, and this is me checking through it two or three times and seeing if it was, it was different. If you came there a different day, different time, I couldn't see that at all. The most expensive thing on the menu was $106 for a lobster tail, and most of the guys didn't seem like they got lobster. They got steak. The steak averaged around 70 as high as $92 and but that was a far I mean it was only I looked like 12 to 15 guys it wasn't the entire tire team but the reason why I bring this up is because of the fact that hey let me give players the NFL XFL let me give you some insight okay I'm not a big fan of this, even if let's say it wasn't true or the fact that you have you put a bill of, let's say, 10, 15,000 or 20,000. Let's say this one was just a joke, but let's say it truly is a situation where somebody has to pay 10,000 plus for a meal or a night out at a club or what have you. You go to a club or something, you can go through 10, 15, 20, 30,000 quickly. 
guys, you got to save your money, man. You got to slow down. An NFL career is not that long. In fact, the NFL to me stands for two things, National Football League and NFL can stand for, and I said it's in a video, not for long, the not for long league. The average playing time that a player has in the NFL is 3.3, three three years, 0.3 months, three years, three months. It's not for long. So those extravagant spending might be a joke, but that two, three, four, five, six years from now, you'll be saying, man, why did I go to <laughs> go this this deep? Why did I just go to Red Lobster or something like that? You know, I'm not a big fan of that type of rookie Joe. You know, there's other ways that you guys can break someone as a rookie where they don't have to spend all of their money because there's nothing guaranteed in the NFL. There's nothing guaranteed in the XFL. Anytime you play sports, there's no guarantees. But one thing is for sure. I've done enough and talked to enough players and know financially the money, the well runs dry. So be mindful of that, especially when you're a rookie. And I don't think that bill was 15000 I think it was a joke, but I'll just put that in there too. Anyway, let me go ahead and just button up the first game of the season. I touched on this with Lou. I thought it was a fantastic game. One thing about the NFL that's very impressive is how great the gameplay is, even in game one. I, and I wasn't shocked at that, but it's like almost every year I get impressed by the level of competition, the gameplay, even in game one. Guys are going after it, trying to compete at the highest level. You saw that from Detroit Lions. You saw that from Kansas City. And it's just, you know, props to, props to both the NFL and NFL for giving us as fans fantastic professional you guys are both awesome <laughs> you know that is understatement i've played in leagues and i used to be a, a baseball player and i'm telling you unprofessional was like the middle name and <laughs> it is very appreciated so having said that, let me give you my predictions for week one. I did miss that first game. I felt as if even though I knew that Travis Kelsey was not going to play, he was scratched, late scratch, but I had enough time to change my pick per se. I still felt as if Patrick Mahomes was going to do a heroic act. I did feel as if the game was going to be very close. So that did not surprise me. And I felt it was going to come down to a play or two. That also didn't surprise me. I felt Patrick Mahomes was going to do a heroic act and they were going to win the game. So I did pick Kansas City for that particular game to win. It didn't work out that way. But so I got the first game wrong, but there's many more that I'm going to get right. In fact, let me go ahead and bring on a special caller now. Welcome to the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. How you doing tonight? If you can hear me, I can't hear you. I don't know if you're on mute. Hello, are you talking to me? Oh, oh, this is Diane. Yeah, I can, I can hear you can now. Hear you. I, can, I can hear you now. Yes, how you been? Good, how are you? And yes, I was on mute. Okay, that's all right. That's, that's quite all right. I wasn't I'm glad talking. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you're here. In fact, introduce yourself for the fans who don't know you. Fans who don't know me, this is Diane. <laughs> All right. And this the is my first time on Allen's show. <laughs> That's right, Diane. We're so glad to hear from you. So glad that you're with us and you called at the right time. In fact, I wanted to get your thoughts. What are your thoughts on game one of the, of the NFL regular season? Um, it was a good game. <laughs> yeah, it was. It came down to the end. It was a close game and what are your thoughts on this season? What do you hope that happens in the NFL season? I hope the Buffalo Bills do good. They're my favorite wow. football team. Wow. I mean, that's that's definitely a great team. 
do you expect things to be a lot better with Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs? Yes. Yeah, so it should be interesting and and definitely hopefully, you know, Josh Allen was on the cover of Madden, hopefully he doesn't have that Madden jinx as they would say. Um what's the Madden jinx? Yeah, that's the thing where players who have been on the cover of Madden, unfortunately that year that they are on the cover usually statistically has not been the greatest year for them. It has called the Madden jinx that when you and this he's on the 2024 cover of the new madden that, that just came out well and i hope that doesn't happen to him i hope not too i'm hoping he breaks that but it it's been pretty alarming how it's been turning out but i hope the bills do great i think if stefan diggs and josh allen are on the same page i think they could go far yeah they got a great team. So what is it about the Bills that made you such a big fan? One of my former co-workers is a Bills fan. Wow. That's interesting you said that because one of, one of my co-workers, too, is a huge Bills fan, and they they love the Bills, and yeah. it's, been, it's, it's been great. And well, actually, this is in the – this is someone I used to work with. I don't work with this person anymore. Oh, right, yeah. And and the Bills, they, they went to four Super Bowls. Unfortunately, they didn't get one. I was kind of hoping they did. I was hoping they didn't beat the Bucks, which they lost to the Bucks. but I was hoping that they did get one later on. I'm sorry, the, the, the Giants. I was When they played the Giants, I wanted the Giants to win, but every other year after that, I wanted the Bills to win, and they didn't get one, unfortunately. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah, Maybe this but year. This year is the year. That's right. This year is the year. That's right, folks. Diane said it. And in fact, that is a sign that the Bills are going to win game one, right? But yeah, Diane, it's going to be a great, great season. It's going to be fantastic. I hope your Bills win, and I'm so glad you called in on the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. We hope to hear from you in the future. Sure. All right. Definitely have a great weekend, and I'll look forward to And you're going to hold it down for Lou because, I, unfortunately, we heard about his unfortunate death in the family, and I hope that you call in and support him tomorrow. Absolutely. I don't think I don't think I've ever missed one of our shows. Wow, that's that's consistency right there. You're you're the MVP. Mm-hmm. Keep it up, the great work. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Oh, you're welcome, and thank you so very much for calling in. We tremendously appreciate you, Diane. Appreciate you're welcome. You. Have a great weekend. I appreciate and... you too, Alan. Oh, thank you. That means a lot to me. You're welcome. Thank you again. Take care for now. Okay. Take care. Bye bye now. Yeah, that's the great Diane. Definitely so glad to hear from Diane. This is awesome. And in fact, you guys have an opportunity to join us here on the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show as well at 516 418 5572. Again, that's 516 418 5572. I'm going to go ahead and give you guys. My predictions for week one, I did uh, did get the first game incorrect. I did choose the Chiefs. The Lions did win. So we got more games coming. We got the Bengals versus the Browns. It's going to always an interesting game. But I think that since Joe Burrow is back and the Bengals, now that they got a chance to start playing after seeing the first game, and I think that kind of gives the Bengals an advantage. You know, now that you, you know, here's an opportunity for Joe Burrow to kind of give Patrick Mahomes a run for his money for that number one spot. But I think the Bengals are going to go ahead and, and beat the Browns. So that's going to be my prediction. The Bengals versus the Browns. I got the Bengals winning. And then we have the Ravens versus the Texans. But definitely Lamar Jackson is going to do his thing. 
He's going to be on fire. I think he's going to have a fantastic game against the Ravens. I'm, I'm sorry, against the Texans. I just think that's a, a very good matchup for him. And I got the Ravens winning against the Texans. We have a, this is a tough game, a really tough game. We have the Bucks versus the Vikings. And this is actually a tough pick. It really is. If it was anything other than my team, I probably would give the Vikings the nod because of the fact that they just have a lot of weapons. And not that the Bucks don't, but I, I just feel as if there's a little bit of, I don't know, there's a little bit of, hey, how are the Bucks going to be kind of thing. So I, I'm going to go with the Bucks to beat the Vikings in a shocker. One thing that will make a difference is the fact that Dalvin Cook is no longer on the Vikings. So I have the Bucks winning a very close game against the Vikings. And then we have the Panthers versus the Falcons. That's, that's going to be also always a competitive game. Panthers versus the Falcons. And I just feel as if the Panthers are going to go ahead and steal a win. I have the Panthers beating the Falcons. We have the Cardinals against the Commanders. And this is going to be interesting because a lot of things changing in in Arizona. A lot of things going on also for the Commanders. But I do think the Commanders will shock and win game one against the Cardinals. So I got the Commanders. We have the Jaguars versus the Colts. It's another interesting game, you know, being at Jonathan Taylor won't be there, but I, I think the Colts are going to prevail and beat the Jags. I have the Colts winning that game there. Actually, I'm, I, I, I beg your pardon. I, I do have the Jags beating the Colts. I beg your pardon. I have the Jags beating the Colts. So Jags beat the Colts. And that's right. I was going to go with the Colts, but Johnson Taylor not being there, I got the Jags winning. So Jags, we have the 49ers versus Steelers. It's going to be a very interesting game, but I do think the 49ers are going to pull that game out. So we have the 49ers. Actually, the Steelers do play the 49ers pretty well, but I, I just think 49ers are going to pull it out and win that game. We have the Saints versus the Titans, and this is going to be a very competitive game, but I do think – the Titans are going to do their thing. Derrick Henry is always a guy, you know, you, it's just hard to stop. I would love the fact they got DeAndre Hopkins. So that's going to be interesting. So I got the Titans winning. And then we have the Raiders versus the Broncos. You know, there's a lot of pressure on Russell Wilson to, to go ahead and perform. And the Raiders need to do something too. I've, I'm going to go ahead. This is going to be a, that's a tough pick there. I'm going to go with the Raiders. I'm going to go with the Raiders on that pick there. That one's tough. The Eagles versus the Patriots. I think this is going to be a very close game, actually. I really do. But I do think the Eagles are going to pull this one out. Jalen Hurt is going to do his thing. We have the Rams versus the Seahawks. And this is going to be a very good game, but I do think the Seahawks pull this game out. And then we're going to go to the Dolphins versus the Chargers. It's going to be interesting to see, but I got the Chargers also winning this game as well. I just think that when it comes down to it, the Chargers do have a lot of offensive weapons. So I got the Chargers winning Packers versus the Bears. Need I say more? The Packers have the Bears numbers. And the fact that they got rid of Montgomery, who played last night and did his thing. My man Montgomery had a very, very good game for the Lions. And he, because of the fact that he played so well for the Bears, he was like a late pick that I got. I, people didn't know that. I think they forgot about Montgomery. But I picked him up, and he, I played him. So props to Montgomery. Let me give him a round of applause, in fact. And then we have the Cowboys versus the Giants. This should be an interesting game. 
I'm, I'm going to say the Cowboys are going to win this game. Uh, it's going to be interesting, but I just think uh, the Cowboys usually start off the season. There's a lot of pressure on them. I, I think that they're going to pull out and win this game. And then we have the Bills versus the Jets. And because of the fact that Diane called and she's a Bill fan, today I'm going to be a Bills fan too for this pick. And I'm going to choose the Bills over the Jets. So that's the Monday night game. So those are the picks for week one. I will let you guys know how I did. I'm already down 0-1. But that is just the first game of the season. So far, so good for my fantasy football league, so. <laughs> but, yes, what we'll do is we'll take a little break right now. I'm going to talk about Coach Prime. Deion Sanders gets his first win against TCU. Talk about that. I'll also talk about Ronald Acuna and his chances of getting the MVP. Well, I will break this all down for you, and then I'll also talk some boxing news as well. A lot of great things happening here on the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. I'll give you guys an update on that as well. We're going to take a little, quick little break. I am not going anywhere. I will be right back with you. We already have a great show going on the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. We're going to keep it going. So this is the sports theme break song by Sam Scola. Really appreciate Sam Scola and Mary out there in Maine. The sports theme song. Hey, you guys need to reach out to me, and I will make it happen where I connect you to Sam Scola. So we can go ahead and give them that record deal. Let's make it happen, guys, right here on the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. Again, we're taking a little quick break. I'll be right with you. Here's a sports theme song by Sam Scola right there in Maine. theme song really appreciate sam scola and definitely we're gonna do if you have don't have that phone number let me give it to you now 516-418-5572 516-418-5572 so yeah we had coach prime game one Deion sanders earns his first win against tcu so let me go ahead and give colorado Deion sanders for coach prime a round of applause
Colorado Buffaloes. So, yes. And that was a big story of him getting this first win. I was not surprised that he got the first win. I was The only thing that did surprise me is, man, I mean, I'm not hating. I'm not I'm never going to be a hater. It's just not my thing. But, I mean, that was a lot to take in on. Okay, it was one game, guys. Like, the first game of the season, I mean, it was just – I thought it was overkill the amount of attention that he got. Like, okay, it was a it was a big upset. Deion Sanders is a great coach, so it's not like it was a shock to me. I, I was just surprised that, you know, they were acting as if he won the, the national championship. I mean, it's game one, guys. You still have to keep things in perspective. There's a long season. Just like the Detroit Lions won the first game, that's great. Then, you know, they beat the Chiefs, but it's it's game one. I mean, what the point I'm trying to make is that you don't win a championship in game one. It's kind of like playing a round of golf. You hit a birdie in the, in the first hole, which is tacit. That's a great start, but it, it doesn't mean at the end of 18 holes, you're going to have a fantastic scorecard. It doesn't mean that if you can win game one in anything, it's a great start, but it's not the whole season. So I think people need to keep that in perspective. It's not the whole season. Coach Prime can coach, guys. I mean, not only that, sometimes being a person that has charisma, who is who knows how to coach, but also knows how to do social media, how to get attention, that gravitates to people. Because you know that if you're playing for Colorado – you have an opportunity, you're going to get looked at. People are going to notice you. It's like, you know, you're the biggest show on earth. You know, it's not in a joking way, but hey, if you're a prospective player, you're D, you're an athlete, and you go and you play with Coach Prime, there's a very good opportunity you have to get noticed because you know that the cameras are, are there. So you have to look at that as an opportunity for you to get yourself noticed. And one of the things that was glaring to me, Coach Prime took over the Colorado job, was how poor the culture in Colorado was. I mean, everybody was scared because they looked at it as being adversity. A coach comes in here who wants to win. They were intimidated, and they hit that transfer portal. Most players, I mean, some a lot came in, but a lot went out. And that just showed to me how poor the culture is. Deion Sanders, Coach Prime is going to turn around things. He already has already. But let's not make it too big. It's just one win. Let's keep that in perspective. There's a long road ahead. He has to keep moving forward, keep grinding, keep advancing, and looking in the rearview mirror, not, you know, things like that. Because I want Coach Prime to succeed. But, guys, it's game one. You know, like, all right. And for players, uh, for media or people thinking that, you know, Coach Prime is, is a celeb coach, it, that, that's way back yonder. It's not now. He's a legit coach. And, yes, there are some times where, you know, colleges will go ahead, and even in the NFL, they'll go ahead and make a splash celeb hire without really looking into it, that's not Coach Prime. So props to Coach Prime on his first win. I pray and hope that he gets a lot more and continues success. And the next thing is we have Ronald Kuna, who is, in my view, pretty much a lock barring finish off the season excellent of getting the MVP for the National League. I really don't see how he doesn't get it. His team is in first place. I mean, they're 15 games ahead, so he's got the best record. He's got 34 home runs and counting, and he has 60 stolen bases, which is right there, history. I think uh, barring something changing in the next three weeks it, it's Ronald Acuna's MVP right now to 
right now. I just don't see anybody else. And unfortunately, I don't see the Yankees making the playoffs. I know that Lou brought that up, but I don't see that happening in Major League Baseball. So, you know, props to Ron Acuna for having an outstanding season. Yeah, I mean, when, you, when you're when you balling like that, and he definitely is a guy that is well-known around the league, other players are impressed by him, so I, I don't see how he doesn't get it. I really don't. So we'll see. I'll keep you posted on that. And, you know, in boxing news, there's going to be history. I'm hoping that I actually can get media access for this. We have Amanda Serrano. For those who don't know, is fighting Danila Ramos. But here's the the historic part of it. It's going to be here in Orlando, and they're going to fight for three-minute rounds. Three-minute rounds. First time ever a boxing match. Instead of two-minute rounds for the ladies, it's actually going to be the same length of time for the men. So three-minute round, first time in history for female boxing. So that deserves a round of applause. I give it a round of applause. I just hope that, you know, that the women can withstand the change as far as the, the stamina. It's three minutes. I know that a lot of times fighters have been asking for it. One of our former guests, Sinisa Superbad Estrada, said that she prefers a three-minute round. In fact, she said that during our interview. And, you know, seeing is believing because that that's, you know, the thing is, they I guess they, they want to see more knockouts, and they felt as if the two-minute round didn't provide that as much. So I just hope that there isn't more injuries because of this change. I hope it's a positive change. But, you know, it is a difference going three rounds versus two. I just hope that the women can, you know, physically adjust to it and smooth transition. But I, I'm all for this. I, I don't see this day and age, I don't see this being something that's, a shocker. I, I, I kind of felt as if it was trending in that direction to go to three minutes. So it wasn't a shock to me, but definitely, you know what? I got to give women's boxing as, as a whole, a big round of applause. You know, women's boxing has really been holding it down. You know, now you have women as the main event. And that was unheard of years ago. So they've really made positive strides in the right direction, doing big things. And it's going to be great to see this. So I'm going to do my best to cover this fight. It is going to be, let me just go ahead and give you that, that time frame of when that fight's coming up. So if you guys want to go ahead and check it out, let me go ahead and pull us up here. And it's, it's going to be history. So, <laughs> it's going to be 12 rounds, three minutes each, Friday, October 27th, but in unified featherweight championship. So it should be outstanding. I'm going to keep you guys posted on that as well. Yeah, so I'm going to definitely do my best to See if I can make it. It's, it. They got the X over the women's. It just says championship boxing. Not even women's. It just says championship boxing. 12 rounds, three-minute rounds. Unified featherweight championship. Friday, October 27th. Caribe, Royale, Orlando. And it's due most valuable for promotions. So definitely should be interesting to see that. I just thought about that. That's actually on a Friday night of our show. Oh, wow. Got a schedule conflict there. <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah, so that's going to be coming up in October. And there's some, a lot of great things here that's coming up here on the Allen Alfred Sports Talk show. I am finalizing in, you know, I've already done an interview with former NFL player, Sean Harper. He is now an two-time author, best-selling author, as well as motivational speaker. And he has a security firm in Ohio. 
a lot of great discussion, a lot of great things. We're editing that video. I'm going to make sure you guys get a chance to see that in the coming weeks. That has some awesome things. We have some other great interviews coming up as well. And I'll discuss those more in detail during the week. I don't want to spoil the surprise just yet. But we have those things coming up. It's it's always a great time here at the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. I will be in October covering the XFL Showcase. I'll be doing that. And I will be doing, hopefully, later this month or next month, another boxing event. And because it is a Friday night, that is going to cause an issue. But we will see. I might. I was thinking about doing this, doing a live telecast there at a boxing night. This might be the time to do it. I will keep you guys up to date on that as well. That should be interesting to see. So, hey, I love seeing history. So, definitely, I'll keep you guys posted on that. And tomorrow is going to be a great day because I get the day started off with my great friend and show sponsor, Chef G's. Chef G's and I, myself, and other quite a few other great men in the in the community is going to be eating a men's breakfast so that's going to be always a great time a great fellowship so chef g's Florida florida barbecue sauce so delicious and addicting you may need a support group and that's chef g's florida barbecue sauce four great flavors classic fusion honey mustard and heat wave he also has two great rubs and he also has a brand new location at 301 South 22nd Street in Tampa. If you need culinary services, he's also have a barbecue coming up, which he does only once a year. So make sure you guys check that out as well. You can get all that insight at flbbqsauce.com. And it's flbbqsauce.com. We're going to play again the Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce song by Sam Scola. Really appreciate Sam Scola in Maine. Sam Scola, folks, wish him well because he is now taking a two-week vacation in Greece. So that is really awesome. Safe travels. Great time to Sam Scola and Mary. So here's the Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce song by Sam Scola in Maine. Counting for variety, Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce, a natural flavor. Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce, Florida gold honey mustard on burgers and ribs. Tasty fusion on pork and sausage. A classic taste for chicken steak chips. Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce. Serve on fish and vegetables. Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce. Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce. Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce. There you go, Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce. So delicious and addicting. You may need a support group. Definitely check them out at flbbqsauce.com, flbbqsauce.com. You guys are wonderful, and I really appreciate all you guys for listening to the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. Definitely, this was fantastic. Got a chance to have special guest Matthew Tyler from the XFL Insider Podcast. Make sure you guys follow him. Subscribe to his channel. Make sure you guys plug in for the XFL. They're doing big things. Make sure you do that. Also, want to thank Lou for calling in. Want to thank first-time caller Diane for calling in. Lou is a regular caller. Diane was the first time she called in. Was today. It's a special, special thing. 
Really want to thank Sean Harper as well. He did an interview with me this week. That, that interview is, is going to be published soon. I'm just doing a couple of editing on it. Make sure that you guys get great content here at the Allen Offred Sports Talk Show. If you haven't already, please done so. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel at Allen Alford. Just type in Allen Alford. You'll find it. It really helps support the channel and the Allen Alford Sports Talk Show. We tremendously appreciate it. It doesn't cost anything. And we would love for you guys to get some great insights to go check on that. Please follow us at Allen Alford Sports Talk Show on Facebook. And you can follow me on all social media, Alan Alfred on Twitter, as well as Instagram. I really tremendously appreciate you guys. Guys are awesome. Thank you for being so supportive of our show. Thank you for all that you do. And definitely be safe, be well. Many continued prayers to Mike Williams' family. Take care. Have a great weekend. Have a great weekend kickstarts in the NFL season. You guys are wonderful. Take care. Be blessed. We're going to end the show with another great Sam Scola song. So it's the end of the show song by Sam Scola. Appreciate Sam Scola and Mary. You guys are awesome. Enjoy that vacation. Man, that's awesome. Two weeks in Greece. So I'll see you guys when you get back. But I'll see you guys next Friday. I'll be back here same time at the Allen Offered Sports Talk Show, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time Zone. Be blessed, be well, take care for now, love you guys. Oh